Hallo zusammen, I'm your Vlog Dave and this is this year's end of year review. What happened this year? Well, many things obviously and I want to talk about a couple of them in this video. And because it's gonna be a lot of stuff, most probably, well, I will put timestamps in the video description so you can choose which parts you are interested in watching and, uh, well, you can leave out the other ones, but obviously you're also invited to watch the whole video. That is appreciated as well. 2016 was the first full year of Vlog Dave, of me being Vlog Dave, basically. Most of you will know that I started the channel back in uh, April 2015, it was, yeah. One and a half years ago, basically. And this year was the first full year, so... What can I say? The progress and the evolution of the channel really surprised me and overwhelmed me to some extent as well, because... I never thought of that, like, I never thought that could happen. This wouldn't have happened without you guys, this wouldn't have happened without my very good friend Vuko, for instance, and other channels that pretty much pushed me a little bit and helped me out with that. So I'm really glad how everything turned out, how everything went for me personally and also for the channel, obviously, so... Yeah, more about that later. So I thought it might be a cool idea to compare a few statistics and all that, a few analytics, because on YouTube, as a YouTuber, you have analytics, you can check them out, and they basically give you numbers and figures of, well, viewers, subscriptions, likes, dislikes, uh, yeah, similar things, view time, for instance, and, uh, well, let's take a look at a couple of those figures, shall we? We shall, we shall. So in 2015, I had around 51,000 views in total. And in 2016, it was around 21,000 views. That's a plus of 170,000 views in total. Wow. And there is a similar increase in likes, luckily. Well, in 2015, I had 4,444 likes. Yeah, I'm serious about that number. And in 2016, I had 9,168 likes. As of December 26th, that is. So YouTube-wise, I'm really happy with 2016. The whole channel progress and the evolution of the channel, many new video ideas, many new ideas for new video series, well, I can't be sad about all that, not really. I actually like all videos that I made, because otherwise I wouldn't have made them in the first place. And I have a good idea of what I want to achieve and what I want to, like, deliver in terms of quality content. So, and even beforehand, like, even when I'm still writing the scripts and all that, I still know, okay, that's good enough, well, I should rework that and all that. I basically know that right away, which is something that's really cool and I'm really happy about that, <laughs> obviously. So yeah, obviously the collaboration videos are always fun. For instance, this time around I also had a collaboration with a second YouTuber next to Get Germanized, my dear friend Vuko, and this time it was Herr Antrim. Learn German with Herr Antrim, I think is the whole channel name. And I contributed to a video called, I think it was How Germans Pronounce Tschechisches Streichholzschächtelchen, which was a really cool video, so yeah. And just by the way, you will see various thumbnails appearing in this video, and you can click all of them right away, or you can find links to those videos in the video description. And obviously it's always cool to make fan mail unboxings, to get packages from you guys from your country, with things from your country, certain products, for instance candy and all that, or even like portraits, you know? Every single time I feel really honored about that, I feel really grateful to have such cool viewers and to get those things. I don't take anything of that for granted, let me say that. But apart from all the cool videos I made this year, which pretty much includes everything I made this year video-wise, I also made a rather difficult video and a rather sad video too. I'm still glad I made it, in a way, but well, yeah, it was tough. It was really tough. It was about the death of my cat Luca, 
So once again, I want to thank every single one of you guys that left a really uplifting comment there. Um, that really means a lot as much as basically being able to talk to good friends about it. Vuku is a very good example for that. And during this year of friendship became even stronger, I'd say, which is a really, really cool thing. And I'm really happy to have him and other really good friends in my life. For sure. So yeah, I had a lot of fun in 2016, nevertheless. It was a really good year, friendship-wise, for instance. I spent a lot of really good quality time with old and new friends. So before I'm gonna continue and gonna be talking about non-YouTube related stuff that happened this year, I wanna say that I won't talk about politics or private stuff in this video. Yes, in fact, I have my own opinions and I have my own views on many different subjects and things, but that doesn't mean I have to talk about them publicly and I won't do that in this video, so sorry, not sorry. However, let's talk about some non-YouTube related stuff and let's begin with music. So some of you will already know that I'm really into music, yes I am, especially into rock and metal and especially, especially into progressive rock and metal. There are three album releases I consider my albums of the year. The first one is Affinity by Haken. The second one is Sorceress by Opeth and the third one is Hardwired to Self-Destruct by Metallica. So Haken is a progressive rock and metal band from the UK and their album Affinity was the first proper album by them I really listened to. I'd say it's very melodic, yet a bit complex and really interesting for everyone who has an affinity <laughs> to clever rock and metal. Opeth is a progressive rock and metal band from Sweden and this record called Sorceress is a bit more linear and direct than many of their previous albums. It's the heaviest record since 2008's Watershed. It's a mixture of rock, hard rock, a bit of folk, progressive rock and a tiny little bit of metal. Well, I guess I don't have much to say about Metallica anymore, but here we go. They are a metal band from the USA and this album is the first proper studio album since 2008's Death Magnetic. And I was pleasantly surprised by both the songwriting and the sound quality in particular. It's way better and more effective than Rick Rubin's Loudness War on Death Magnetic. Cutting things short, I'd say it's their best full album since 1991's self-titled, also known as The Black Album. Another record of 2016 that I like is The Last Hero by Alterbridge. It's even a bit heavier than the already heavy sounding predecessor Fortress, which is among my all time favorite records by now, yes. But even though it's a really good record too, it just hasn't resonated with me all that much yet. I don't know why. However, here are six of my favorite songs that were released in 2016 in a loose order. The first one would be Spit Out The Bone by Metallica. Wow, I mean, it's really heavy, it's really thrashy, it's even a bit 80s sounding, in terms of Metallica that is, and especially James Hetfield hasn't sounded that raw and that good in many years. I'd even say it's one of the best songs by Metallica since 1988's album And Justice For All. Song number two would be Book Of Regrets by Steven Wilson. Released on the EP 4.5, this song is a really strong mix of what I'd call uplifting melancholy. It's a cool and grooving rock song with a lot of atmosphere and, well, thought-provoking lyrics even. And although it's over 9 minutes long, it doesn't fail at sounding fresh and original all the way through. Number 3, 1985 by Haken. So yeah, the band Haken was my favorite musical discovery in 2016. The whole record called Affinity sounds both retro and very modern at the same time basically. It's both melodic and partially complex, very sophisticated and cleverly made rock and metal. And although having an own sound, the whole record is a vivid mixture of different artists you could say, including the likes of Rush, King Crimson, Dream Theater, Opeth, Porcupine Tree and many more. This song in particular sounds a lot like Dream Theater in their best days, you could say. Number 4. The Architect by Haken. Yes, it's Haken again. 
This one is definitely my favorite long trek of the year. It's almost 16 minutes long, but it doesn't really feel like that. The melodies and especially the chorus are really catchy yet heavy. Number 5. Willow the Wisp by Opeth. This song was directly inspired by the track Dunringle by the progressive rock group Jethro Tull. In other words, it sounds really light and folky, yet melancholic and thought-provoking. Unlike the aforementioned tracks, this one is based around the vocals and an acoustic guitar. And that's basically it. And number 6. Failure by the Devin Townsend Project. It's basically the first time for me to listen to Devin Townsend and his music. And what can I say, it's a really, really cool song. I think the best part of it is the bridge and the guitar solo, which sounds really heavenly, open, freely, atmospheric uh, and elegiac. To be honest, I was quite underwhelmed by this year's Dream Theater album, The Astonishing. I think it's way too long. I mean, it's over two hours of music. That's way too much, I think. And less would have been more here. I'm also really looking forward to new music in 2017, for instance to the upcoming fifth record by Blackfield, titled V5. Their new song Family Man has become a really catchy tune I've been carrying around with me, well, almost every day. So that's enough music talk, let's talk a bit about my favorite movies of 2016. So I watched a couple of movies this year, including the new Star Trek movie, which was really good. And I just got introduced to Star Trek this year too by my good friend Vuko, aka Get Germanized. Thanks again, buddy. Um, well, for instance, we also watched The Arrival, which is a bit of an alternative alien movie. It's not about action and all that. Not really, but it's still an interesting movie. Rogue One was pretty good. Yeah, we watched that too. Um, I wouldn't say it's better than. Episode 7, for instance. It's a good and solid movie. Um, I'd say it's a bit more about action scenes than Episode 7 was. But as long as you're not like the uber Star Wars fan, you don't really have to watch it. I'm pretty sure I forgot a few really cool movies that I just can't come up with that I really enjoyed. But in particular, I liked Doctor Strange. I was really surprised by that movie because I didn't know anything about Doctor Strange before. And it's really cool. I like especially the Asian touch to it and also the Inception like scenes. That's really cool. I also enjoyed Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them a lot. It kind of belongs to the Harry Potter series, but then again, it doesn't really. And that is resembled in the movie, I'd say, because it kind of feels like Harry Potter, but it, then again, it doesn't at the same time. Eddie Redmayne, I mean, he's a brilliant actor. I already knew that when I watched, I think it was called The Theory of Everything, the movie about Stephen Hawking back then, the biopic, really, really good movie, first class acting qualities there, yeah. So Eddie Redmayne, good guy. Apart from movies and all that stuff, I really became addicted to The Walking Dead. And I also got to know the series just this year. Um, I think I watched season one to season six in around two weeks. Yeah, that already says a lot. And yes, I've already watched the first episode of the seventh season too. Yeah. And just like last year, my very good friend Vuko introduced me to a couple of new things too. For instance, the architecture documentary series show thingy called Grand Designs, which is pretty interesting and really informative. So I never really had a close relationship to anime and manga, but yeah, once again, Vuko introduced me to One Piece. It's just like 600 plus episodes to go, but yeah, it's cool. Regarding video games, I actually can say 
too much about that stuff, if anything at all, because I don't think I played a single game that came out this year, that was released and published this year. However, I, um, I'm really interested in Dishonored 2, and I think I will watch a Let's Play of that one very soon, basically. But I've never played it myself yet. I really like the first one, but other than that, well, I saw quite a bit of The Last Guardian, which is a really cool game as well, in a way. Although it could have been better as well. And Vuko, who played the game and who livestreamed the game, basically agrees with me on that. I mean, the controls and the commands you can give to Trico, which is your companion, your animal friend, so to speak, um, they are a bit clumsy at times and they don't really work. And although you have the right solution, to a puzzle, for instance, Trico just doesn't do what he's supposed to do and you're standing there waiting for something to happen, thinking, oh well, that was the wrong solution, that was totally wrong, I have to try something else. Yeah, that can take away quite a lot of the fun, I'd say. Which is a pity, because it's a good game, but then again, it could have been better, I'd say. So what's gonna happen in 2017 regarding Vlog Dave? I will continue making videos and, well, helping you guys, basically. I'm really satisfied with what I came up, like regarding video ideas and ideas for video series and all that. And I want to continue that, yeah. It's still as much fun as it was back in April 2015, back when I started the channel. I'd really like to do certain things that are also kind of related to the Vlog Dave channel next year. I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. Well, wish me luck. Um, that would be awesome. That would be really awesome. Yeah, I'd like to thank every single one of you guys individually if I could. But I can't do that, sadly enough. So thank you very much, all of you guys for your support, for your continued support this year and last year as well. For watching my videos, for liking them, for sharing them, for subscribing to my channel, for giving and leaving feedback, comments and all that, for suggesting new video ideas and all that. Um, thank you very much in general. Keep spreading the word about the Vlog Dave channel, that really helps a lot especially little channels like mine, because, well, it's not that easy to find new viewers, being a little channel. And by the way, yes, I know I keep repeating that stuff very often, like, like my videos, share them with other people and all that stuff. I know about that and I know many people might find that annoying, but then again, it's a necessary evil, so to speak. Um, I have to do that to some extent because that is pretty much what keeps the channel alive. Apart from you guys watching the videos, obviously, but that is really what keeps the channel alive and that's necessary. So if you want to support me like that, feel free to do that. Um, that really helps a lot. I want to, I need to, and I really like to thank every single one of my Patreon supporters. Patreon is a crowdfunding website on which you can support my channel by pledging a certain amount of money per video. Without your financial help, all of this wouldn't be possible the way it is at the moment. So everyone who can and wants to invest in this edutainment channel has the opportunity to leave a little pledge or a little tip per video. For instance, this could be just $1 per video. I usually produce 12 to 16 videos per month at a max, so that would make 12 to $16 per month, and that would really help me a lot. And by the way, there's gonna be a helpful reward for every patron soon too. More about that in a separate video next year. I think a good and really fair thing about Patreon is that you have complete control of all settings all the time. It also works with PayPal, different credit cards and bank accounts. And just in case you have a question about Patreon and how that works and all that, don't hesitate to contact me. 
And last but not least, I made a little channel survey video a couple of months ago where I'm actually asking you to answer a couple of questions regarding this channel, which would be really appreciated. So yeah, if you want to give me some feedback and if you want to give me some more information on where you're coming from and why you're interested in learning German, for instance, feel free to watch that video. That would be greatly appreciated. And all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for this YouTube 2016 basically and well happy new year have a good 2017 please stay true to the channel stay loyal so to speak that would make me really happy and well see you next year because that was the last video for 2016 bye bye i'm your vlog dave tschüss und bis zum nächsten mal